Now, the burden on the taxpayer has significantly come down under the Modi government. Right after the 2014 election, former finance minister Arun Jaitley raised the personal income tax exemption limit to 2.5 lakh rupees from 2 lakh rupees. The tax rates for the middle class, those earning between 2.5 lakh rupees to 5 lakh rupees, was brought down to in 2017 and in the interim budget earlier this year the overall exemption limit was raised to 5 lakh rupees now in terms of corporate taxes the government has continued its phased reduction before the budget if a company had a turnover of less than 250 crore rupees annually then the corporate tax rate was 25 percent that threshold has been raised so companies with a turnover below 400 crore rupees will now have to pay only 25 percent tax this covers nearly 99.3% of the companies in India. And payment of these taxes will also get easier. If a person does not have a PAN card, he or she can pay their income tax with the Aadhaar, meaning the two cards are interchangeable for all practical purposes. More than 120 crore Indians now have Aadhaar card. Therefore, for ease and convenience of taxpayers, I propose to make PAN and Aadhaar interchangeable and allow those who do not have PAN cards to file income tax returns by simply quoting their Aadhaar number and also use it wherever they are required to quote the PAN. So everywhere where you are required to quote the PAN, instead you can just do Aadhaar and even if you don't have a PAN, there is no problem. But the surcharge on individuals with incomes between 2 crore rupees and 5 crore rupees will be raised, meaning the super rich will be taxed more again. Let me tell you the significance of the move. In the 2015 budget, Arun Jaitley abolished the wealth tax. The rationale was simple. It took a lot of money from the government just to collect these taxes. So Jaitley abolished it and replaced it with, with an additional surcharge. Now Nirmala Sitaraman has increased that surcharge. It is a good decision. After all, those who earn more must contribute more to the overall kitty. I therefore propose to enhance the surcharge on individuals having taxable income from 2 crore to 5 crores and 5 crore and above so that effective tax rates for these two categories will increase by around 3% and 7% respectively. The finance minister used taxation to drive home the importance of affordable housing, but a budget cannot bring down taxes on every commodity. Such an idea is utopian. The finance minister raised the customs duty on gold to 12.5%. This was earlier 10%. Similarly, the cess levied on petrol and diesel has been raised by 1 rupee per litre. Crude prices have softened from their highs. This gives me room to review excise duty and cess on petrol and diesel. I propose to increase special additional excise duty and road and infrastructure cess, each one by one rupee a litre on petrol and diesel. Now this may not immediately lead to a hike in fuel prices because the crude prices have softened. This will help the government add more to its coffers without hurting the common man. Meanwhile, customs duty on several raw materials has been reduced. But the one thing that has caught a lot of attention from critics has been the decision to impose a 5% customs duty on imported books. Finance Minister Nirvala Sitaraman says that this customs duty will encourage domestic publishing and printing industry. Now, imported books are not sin goods like cigarettes. The rationale does not raise the duty uh, to, to raise the duty rather on imported books is not very convincing. The other criticism follows from this. It's all good to protect domestic industries, but does this budget then have a protectionist tone? The jury is still out on that one. Criticism apart on the taxation front, this budget is pragmatic and practical. We spoke to lots of experts through the day today. Most of them call it a balanced budget. Investors, though, seem to be disappointed. Nifty and Sensex, both posting sharp losses in today's trade. The Sensex gave away nearly 400 points today. That's a loss of 0.99%, almost a percent. Nifty posted losses to the tune of 1.14%. And the weakness in trade was visible across sectors. Metals, realty, auto, all these stocks suffered because, uh, after the bu budget in fact, because of the sentiment. The banking stocks though were the only ones that gained. So that was the union budget for you. But that is a wrap on this edition of India Watch. Thanks very much for joining us.